call the meeting to order. And I'd like to begin by reading the Open Public Meetings Act. I hereby announce and request that such be included in the minutes of this meeting, that notice of the time, place, and date of the meeting has been prominently posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall, mailed to the Hawk, formerly the Times, the Star Ledger, the Korea News, the Patch, and the Alternative Press, filed with the Borough Clerk and mailed to any person requesting same in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act. And can we have a roll call, Colleen? Yes, Regina Brown, uh, John Hanna, present, okay. Tom Krantz, Sorry, I'm on mute. Margaret Lewis, here, Michael Lewis, here, here. Jan Siegel, here, Kathleen Thomas, here, John Achi, here. Tanisha McGriff. Here. And Francine Glazer. Okay, we do have a quorum, Margaret. Okay, I'd like to start out by saying that we called this special meeting tonight to update the members of the board on what has occurred since we last met regarding Hello. Sheila's fish. Hi, Margaret. Yeah. Oh, Hi. Still in here. Sorry, right, Jana. We can hear you. We can hear you, Regina. <laughs> you on okay? So I thought we would begin by asking uh, Russ and Megan to update the board members on the matters related to Shelley's fish market, and then afterwards the board members can certainly ask questions of Megan and also of uh, Russell and also of the, the owners of Sheelan's Fish Market. You wanna start, Russ? Um, well, I thought somebody was gonna make a motion to go into executive to discuss um, matters pertaining to anticipated litigation. Um, I, I thought we were going to just update the members on what had happened up until first. now, right? Right. That was the plan. We're doing that. That first was and the then plan. We'll yeah. Okay. And the All questions right. Answered, we'll move to executive. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. I, I see. Okay. So just to start out, I've been working very closely with Megan Avalon um, concerning um, Sheelan's Initially, uh, Sheelan's Fish Market, um, as you know, um, the board, you guys have been dealing with uh, inspections related to Sheelan's Fish Market. There's been uh, a history going back to February of this year um, some, with some inspections, some, fail, some failed inspections. I believe there were three consecutive, one in February, one in March, one in April. And there might have been another one in June, but uh, Megan can correct me on that one, and she could feel free to jump in and correct me anytime um, to get one of the facts wrong or inaccurate. Um, at any rate, the June failed. Um, there was a previous, either late May or early uh, inspection that Sheelan's fish market did not pass. And at that time, I think you, uh, the board was going to take action at one of its hearings. Uh, they invited uh, the owners of the fish market to come at a hearing. And I think it was determined then that they were gonna take action on the, on the license pertaining to the fish market and suspend that license for two days, at which time um, that action became evident to the owners. They had retained an attorney the attorney had uh, reached out to me in an effort to see if anything could be done to say to spare the license from being suspended. Um, I said I did not know, and I had called uh, Megan about what had been going on with the fish market. Um, so Megan and I had had a back and forth um, a couple of times um, during, I guess, the week prior to the seventeenth. 
of June. And we had come up with this scenario where the health department would do a reinspection of the fish market um, on June 17th. They would go over there um, because the goal for the fish market is to ensure compliance with all the ordinances and regulations. Um, I had communicated that to the fish market's attorney. I think that was communicated to the ownership. And on June 17th, I believe that a reinspection was performed on the fish market, um, at which time I believe when Christy had performed the inspection, she had uh, checked off all the boxes on some of the prior violations that those were corrected. Um, however, I had heard afterwards from Megan through a phone call that um, what Christy was unable to do was to observe the fish market while it was serving customers. And that meant that Christy did not, uh, was unable to observe the food handling practices and procedures that the fish market would do when they're serving the public. Um, I communicated that to uh, the fish market's lawyer. Um, and afterwards, Megan and I had been communicating via telephone directly, one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And I think one of the things that we had developed um, for your consideration would be um, to listen to counsel for the fish market this evening, invite them to a special meeting, invite them in after you were informed of all these developments and try to work something out whereby the license for the fish market is spared and there is an agreement whereby there would be some reinspections that would occur and a failure to any reinspection would trigger a loss of license. And I think Megan- On the bed. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> um, just to repeat, because I know there was some background noise that any failure of a reinspection would trigger a longer or lengthier suspension of the license. I think Megan and I were, were talking about five days if that were to occur. Um, for and, and that period would go on, I think Megan has suggested for like maybe a year or so. Uh, you know, I don't know, I'm sort of, that would really be up to you guys as a board on how long you wanted to do that. I think Megan thinks a year would be good but any, any failure of a reinspection would then trigger the loss of the license of pulling. And hopefully that would not happen and Sheelan's fish market would just comply and that would never, that would never occur. So that's really the update with regard to the fish market. I don't know if Megan has anything yeah. else to add. If I may, um, yes. so I have the, um, thank you so much, Russ. Um, and uh, thank you uh, to the board members for making the time tonight. Um, so from the last time we met, uh, we had the hearing and um, the um, owners of the fish market were informed that if they uh, received a rating of less than satisfactory on an inspection, they would have their license uh, suspended for two days. When we went back in on the 23rd of June, uh, they knew we were coming, right? We, we, we called them. Uh, and and we told them that you know we would be coming. So in some ways, because it was a reinspection, it was an announced inspection. Uh, when we came in on the twenty third, uh, they did not pass the inspection. Um, so guys, can I can I jump in? It's Sean. You, you guys were just talking about the fish market. I think Megan, you just jumped to crossing. Remember, we have three locations. Oh, okay. Yes, you, you're. I'm sorry. I'm looking at everything at once. I, I do apologize for that. So hold on one second. So, so the fish company that would have been June eighth. Eighth. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. June eighth uh, is when uh, we went in again. Um, announced. Um, and unfortunately, they did not pass. Uh, Christy, at that time, uh, Megan, that is incorrect. We passed uh, with satisfactory on June eighth. No. Uh, no, you, no, you, you did, did not. not. It was the 17th that you passed with the satisfactory. 
Oh, okay. All right. Very good. Um, so we did inform them that um, the license uh, closure uh, would be happening or the suspension of the license per the board hearing. Um, it is my understanding that the uh, restaurant operator, uh, owner operators um, had requested through their council that before the license was actually um, pulled, that we hold a uh, the, the, that, that we hold the action in advance uh, because it's my understanding that through their council, they requested uh, a, a special hearing of the board for reconsideration. Uh, the argument that was made to me at the time was that if we went back in for the reinspection um, and they passed, would the board uh, reconsider because the goal is compliance? Um, you know, in my communications, um, with um, Russ and Margaret, um, ultimately um, that is up to the board. Um, what happened when we came back in for that reinspection, which would have been on the 17th, um, I, I wanna be clear, and you can read the report um, that um, Christy um, has done, and Christy's here too, obviously, to give you a firsthand account. Um, it's not just that food preparation wasn't being done and we were unable to observe it. Um, Christy uh, observed the owner operator actually telling um, patrons that were pulling into the parking lot that the restaurant is closed, we're not ready, come back at 5 p.m. Um, so we were unable to effectively um, perform an inspection because we didn't see any food preparation. Um, I can tell you that uh, Christy did try to reach me immediately. We were in the middle of interviews. Um, for filling Jesse's position. So I wasn't immediately reachable via telephone. Um, and because there was no witnessed violation, uh, Christy did give them a satisfactory, but I do wanna be clear. Uh, there's a big difference between not witnessing violations and getting a satisfactory than actually ensuring the process is done correctly and getting a satisfactory. Um, so, um, they, but um, they, they do have the satisfactory rating, but again, that, that's based on no food prep and the owner operator, um, you know, Christy, Whit Christy witnessed them telling uh, individuals um, to come back because uh, they were not open. Um, and, and here we are. Megan, may I just make one quick comment to what you said, uh, just to be clear. Um, Food prep for the day was already completed. Uh, if you mean food prep for the three customers that I did ask to come back, you are correct. This was my first ever experience uh, doing an inspection and I didn't know there was any difference. Frank handles all this guys, I, I never have. That We have a contract, he and I in place, we're 50-50 partners. He runs the back of the house and I do the front of the house. I do the social media and the marketing. So I thought I was doing the right thing. <laughs> but that doesn't explain why you send people away. Because why have them why interrupt the that? inspection, that's Margaret? Gonna... That's, that's all I was doing. I didn't want them to interrupt the inspection. Things were getting... That sure. was it. Why, don't you, why don't you let the board members uh, conclude their update and then when we have an opportunity to speak, we'll clarify the record. Okay, thank you. I've got some questions. Um, it can I speak? I've got some questions. Um, yes, John. Okay, thank you. Uh, it seems that on uh, June fourteenth, there was a letter sent from Megan Avalone to Shaleen's Fish Company, and um, they were notified that on June eighth resulted in a conditionally satisfactory uh, rating, the inspection, and failure to close during these license suspension will result in a summons being issued for operating without a license. Okay, so on June the 14th, they were notified that they had to close for two days, at which time an attorney, Blick and Law, or Blick Law, was was brought in, I guess. And then on June 16th, they wrote a letter uh, to Megan Avalone. And um, on at this letter, it said, uh, they're asking for if a reinspection could be scheduled for the purpose of the inquiry to prove satisfactory. Is this normal that we tell that we 
allow people to tell us when they want to be inspected? Because uh, where I come from, where I, when I used to work, uh, I came from a healthcare setting, and there's no way you would get the opportunity to tell the inspectors when they should come in. I don't understand. Is this normal uh, that, that, that a person can ask, oh, we want it on this such and such date? Uh, up to then, uh, uh, three times prior, they, this group had failed, uh, had conditionally satisfactory, conditional satisfactory, conditional satisfactory, conditional four inspections with conditional satisfactory. And the only time they passed the inspection, and even that one, if you look at it, there are some, I think, glaring things that occurred that were repeated. Uh, number 14. Food contact services properly cleaned and satisfied, a repeated offense. And number 17, cold holding, also a repeated offense, which, I, I, you know, I'm not a food inspector, but uh, seems to be, uh, I don't know, this, that in spite of that, they still got a, got a satisfactory rating. Um, so the first question I have is, is it normal that uh, the board would allow that, that the, uh, the Board of Health allows uh, a, a venue when they bring an attorney in, do they allow them to uh, to schedule, well, we would like the inspection on such and such date on, or in this case, June 17th. Is that is that normal that they would in, uh, uh, be allowed to pick the date when the inspection is gonna be? Or is it more like, I thought the idea was a, a, surpr a surprise inspection. You should be ready at any time. Yeah, if, if I may, John, um, yes. for the initial inspections, uh, those are always a surprise. Mm -hmm. unannounced. Um, that's per, you know, the uh, state regulation. Um, so uh, those are always a surprise. We do not schedule them. For the reinspections, um, it's not necessarily that we schedule them, but we want to make sure that they're ready in the sense that they've had time to correct the violations. So typically what an establishment will do is call us uh, within the 30 days and say, okay, we're ready. The violations are corrected. Please come back in. Um, you know, we wanna make sure we give them enough time, any establishment, enough time to correct the violations. So for reinspections, um, in, in some ways by default, they are more or less scheduled because the restaurant tells us when they're ready. May, may, I, may I supplement? Uh, that uh, my name my name is Sean Blick. I'm the attorney that uh, is representing the Sheelands folks. Um, there is a, a statutory framework that permits reinspection. Um, I will just cite to it so that you have it for your record. It's the New Jersey Administrative Code, uh, eight colon twenty four dash eight point one one, and that's going to be subsection B two. When there's a conditional satisfaction uh, placard that's issued. And I'm, so, and I'm paraphrasing, um, a reinspection shall be scheduled, and I quote shall, the reinspection shall be conducted at a, at a time, uh, uh, opportunity for reinspection shall be offered within a reasonable time and shall be determined by the nature of the violation. Um, just for the record, I, I, I wanna say that we were not demanding a specific date. Uh, Ms. Avaloni was, was uh, courteous in recognizing the uh, fact that the holiday weekend was coming up and we were trying to avoid uh, a closure during a busy time for the business. So I, I, I apologize for jumping in, but I wanted to clarify that. Hi, this is Tanisha. I have a question. Did the establishment ever close? So from the initial when we had the last meeting and they were unsatisfactory and the determination was the establishment would close for two days, did that ever occur? That, that did not occur. Um, as soon as they um, did not pass that, that inspection that would have triggered the closure, they did send a notice uh, requesting a hold uh, until they can get this special meeting. Uh, so I did discuss it uh, with uh, the the attorney, uh, Russ Hugel, who's here tonight. And uh, Russ felt as though uh, it made most sense to um, pull the board to see if uh, if the board would um, consider holding a special hearing and, and hold the penalty until the hearing could be held, which is why we're here tonight. Mm. Okay. Were, were Mr. Flannery 
and Mr. Blick given any reason to believe that the penalty would be rescinded in the event that they passed a, a further reinspection? Not on my end. Mr. Yule? Well, no, okay. it was a, it's always a board decision. So, may, may so, I also, was, I'm so sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you I'll let you go. So just to give you a little bit more insight into this, it, this was sort of um, when Sean was retained as as Sheelan Fish Market attorney, he gave me a call and he and he said, is there anything we can, anything that we can do to avoid this? And I said, well, in working with Megan, perhaps. And again, this is all up to the board. If there's a reinspection and if there is a satisfactory on that, the board would perhaps take that into consideration and then there would be no pulling of the license. There would be no suspension. But I think what I added at the time was if, if there's a failure, if there's less than satisfactory, then obviously we would not be having any further conversation because then there would be another failure. And then it's sort of like, there's no compliance then. See, again, when, when I read the ordinances and all the regulations all together, the goal is compliance for businesses. So you, you didn't have compliance, but now on the reinspection, again, no promises were made. If there was a satisfactory grade, on the reinspection, then it would be brought to you all, and then you guys would decide. And just Can I ask a question now. I'm sorry. Just from the just um, from Sheelan's standpoint, I, I just want to say that we, I, I can affirm what Mr. Hugel indicated and Miss Avalon. That there was no representation to us that uh, this was going to forego any future board action. Um, the only assumptions were. Uh, based on the statutory scheme that governs this subject matter, um, that once a uh, satisfactory is issued, um, it effectively renders it the end of the end of the story. Um, so, based on the statutory scheme and the interpretation of that, a satisfactory should render this issue with respect to the fish market to be essentially moot. Can I ask my question now. I disagree with that. So, um, can you yeah, review again where? Megan, where does it stand right now? Is the place in compliance or not? Well, um, you know, we, we had an inspection that did pass, but remember, we didn't see any food prep. So this, I understand. Inspection, this inspection is useless from a public health right. perspective. But that, and that, that inspection occurred after the board voted and decided to, to close the place correct. for two days, correct? That, that is correct. And Mr. Blink, what is it that you guys want right now? Uh, we would like to adhere to the statutory scheme, which is that a satisfactory was issued. Um, from what I'm hearing, it seems that there's a lack of confidence in the satisfactory, um, which I don't know that that's necessarily the case. Uh, well, clear, just, just to be clear, there is not, it's not that I'm not, I, I wanna be very clear. I have confidence in my inspection, but my inspector did not witness any activity because the owner operator was actively chasing customers away. So we have to deal, we have to um, rate on what we see, right? And, and that violation in itself is interfering with an inspection and, and is a separate ticket. But, but, but the, the, the restaurant, the inspection, I do have confidence in because we did not see anything. So I want to be clear on, on that with the board. The inspection is incomplete. But my, and my point is that regardless of whether the inspection was complete or not, it occurred after the board already made its made its decision and the suspension was already decided on. Correct. That's correct. Okay. And under the statute yeah. at, that Mr. Blink is is basically quoting, uh, there's allowed to be a reconsideration pending uh, pending an inspection. Correct, Mr. Blink. I don't believe that's a statute. That that is the statute that I read. That's the NJAC 824-8.11. Right. Um, right. To, be, to be clear, I mean, it does not specifically state that during the pendency of board action and then reinspection uh, that that changes anything per se. But 
Okay. It, it does. I mean, the fact that the satisfaction was issued, I, I think it renders it moot. Now, I, I understand that there may be disagreement amongst the board, um, but, you know, if you, if you take away the license, if you suspend operations after the satisfactory has been issued, it, it does become punitive. It okay, should so be, it is. this is my this is my last my last two cents here. As far as I'm concerned, the suspension was was correct. The inspections were all correct, and whatever happens after that, regardless of the statute that you're quoting right now, which sounds to me like it's open to interpretation, you can't unring the bell, and that's what you're trying to do here. You're trying to unring a suspension, and you're trying to unring four months of repeated violations. And I understand that that's your job, but I don't think that the owners can just hire a lawyer and say, we dispute this, we're going to take this to court, everything that happened in the last four months doesn't count anymore. As far as I'm concerned, the suspension stands, it should continue, and it should have happened when we said it was going to happen. That, you know, there's a separate discussion over whether uh, the inspection that we're talking about was legitimate or not. You know, if my, my opinion is if we didn't see, a, if, if the inspection wasn't done completely to your satisfaction, it shouldn't have been, it sh probably shouldn't have been rated as completed, right? Or satisfactory. Incomplete. But w whatever. I mean, at this point, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it changes nothing. We made a decision, the decision to stand. We're talking about a two-day suspension here. We're not talking about the end of all life on earth. You know, the whole idea is so that the restaurant can, can get their shit together, get on the right page, and then open again and move on. That's my this two is, cents. This is their livelihood. I understand that two days may not seem like much, but you know, as their livelihood, this is the way that they earn money. And this was a closure that was going to take place on a uh, on two days that they were expecting a, a, a good source of business. <laughs> and, and by the way, until they can, so this is their until they can do that this is to their our satisfaction, they about. shouldn't do it. Well, I, I just want to put one more thing on the record here, and that is that you know, the notice for this hearing was sent out three days ago. Uh, my client, uh, Frank Pascal, he's not even in the country at this moment. So he's not even here to enjoy benefit of due process. I've got Mr. Yeah, Flannery here. Uh, yeah. I mean, so any board decision, you know, respectfully is void of due process. Well, any what you're doing right now is, is called, just it's called... Excuse me? Go ahead. Any board, Go ahead, Michael. Any board decision at this juncture would be based off what had previously been decided. And the decision was already in place. All this is is an appeal. No, I don't, I, that's not that's not the case, sir. If you look at the way the statutory framework is laid out, that is not the case at all. I think Dr. Uh, Hannah had something to say. He was trying to talk. Yeah, I, I'm, Apologies. I'm a little concerned about the conversation and mentioning this is their livelihood. Um, I think patient safety is is number one for the Board of Health. And being a physician and hearing the conversation about ordinances, no one once talked about public safety and the function of this board. And the attorney, um, is it Mr. Blink? Uh, it's Blink. I, I, Blink. Sorry. That's so okay. being a physician, I, I think if you would have started the conversation with maybe a risk management plan or the better or, or what, what they're going to do better next time rather than the ordinances might have resonated a little bit better with the board. But again, I think the board's interest is in the public safety and patient safety. I have no doubt that that is the case. Um, however, the extreme measure of closure or suspension of licensure is only authorized under certain circumstances under the statutory scheme. There must be a significant and immediate threat to public health. There must be an imminent hazard that exists. That's and actually not true, Mr. Blick. Um, well, this, is, this is a local ordinance, just to be clear to the board. What we're, we're suspending the license, not under the state statute, under our local ordinance. So it's a difference, um, not because there is um, an imminent health hazard, because the ordinance says that um, after a hearing, the Board of Health has that local authority. So it's two different things. Are, are you referring to the resolution that was, uh, which, which ordinance are you referring to? Because I, frankly, I, I was looking through it to find it and I couldn't find that. It's, um, here, wait, hold on, I'll, I'll get it for you. Hold on, hold on. Hold. I had it called up before when I was talking to Megan and Margaret. Uh, just get it. 
it's uh oh, here it is it's uh chapter 354 of the fanwood borough code that's what the fanwood this is the fanwood board of health that's what they're that's what they're going under so it's under that chapter there's chapter 13 which talks about licensing mm -hmm. subsection c uh, i think i think that's where the board is sort of coming from the, the only section in that sanitary regulation of the fanwood ordinances which i am familiar with is there might have been another one that i didn't cite but yeah I'm, I, looking I, at it, I can, I'm looking at it quickly i can tell you definitively the only section that speaks in terms of closure is section 354-17 which is closure for infection uh, that's not the situation that we're dealing with here. And I know of no statutory well, ordinance, statutory precedent. No, or there's in section B, Sean. But if, if you look under, if you look under licensing section 13 under that chapter, subsection G, a license may be suspended or revoked for a violation by the holder of any provisions of this article. I think that's what is contemplated. I think that is what they typically go under in these situations so that's, just to, just to yeah, that's correct to be clear to the board we're steer. not mandating that the establishment close we're pulling the license we can't mandate uh mr blick is correct we cannot mandate a restaurant yeah no them. right so it's, a, it's all we're license. doing is pulling the license so and that is that is clearly allowed under the municipal code uh, that russ just referenced you know what I heard, Mr. Blick. If you, with all due respect, you basically a couple minutes ago you talked about, you know, a closure being an extreme, uh, an extreme measure, you know, for you know very very serious charges. The implication was that you know these charges are not serious; that we're just kind of doing this. We totally agree that closing a restaurant is absolutely an extreme measure. We don't. I mean, the last time we did this, I can't even remember. We don't do this every day. We don't do this every time we meet. This is not because, you know, you know, as as our as Mr. Dr. Hanna said, this is about keeping the public safe. And I'm really sorry that that Frank is out of the country, but you're here. Sean is here. Uh, you know, th there's a bunch of blame shifting going on here by you. Again, with all due respect, all they got to do is come into compliance. We're not talking brain surgery here. They get two days, close the place, get the staff on board, and then reopen. I just don't get what's so hard about that. Seriously, there, there's no blame shifting. I want to be very clear. It's uh, my role here is to defend the role is to win the case i get it you're well, saying it's, 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 it, it, in so many you words, basically but... said the charges are too you know the, the charges are bullshit you didn't use that word but i'll say it you're saying that it's not worthy of closing the restaurant down and you know your client doesn't have due process he's got a half an owner and he's got you here i mean come on give me a break it's okay i mean look i've made a record um i'm not sure what i can say to that other than Yes, it is a significant uh, uh, issue when the possibility of a licensure revocation or suspension is being considered. Um, I would just urge caution in how you review the statutory scheme because I don't believe that the authority is there on a conditionally satisfactory rating. Um, it, there has to be imminent danger to the public. Um, nobody has articulated that. Nobody has set forth imminent danger in any of the inspection reports. Um, mm -hmm. So you're interpreting something. I don't I don't know that you have the quality quali qualified to do to do that. For example, the the food, as I recall, uh, we had a situation where the food was not stored at the proper temperature. Uh, that could be a cause for serious uh, outbreaks of different kinds of disease. Are you aware of that? I am aware of that. Yes. OK, so How you is that not serious. That? I'm sorry. How is that not serious? Yeah, I don't think that constitutes an imminent threat. <laughs> That's your opinion, <laughs> sir. That's your opinion. That's that's our position. And as a physician, I, I take the opposite position. I concur with Dr. Hannah. Hmm. Absolutely. We're the too. ones who get to decide whether something's a public health threat or not. And I agree. I do too. There's a very high risk for hepatitis A 
And if you have someone that's immune compromised, it could kill them. Especially in the backdrop of, of COVID. Yes. Are, are we still talking about Sheelan's fish market here? Yes. That's all we're speaking of right now, yes. All right. Does anybody else on the board have any questions? So I have, one, I have one more question. It has to do with the letter of June 20th uh, from Russell Hugel to Megan Avalon and, um, and others. And one of the things it says in the second paragraph, one of the things the board could do if they were so inclined would be to enter in, into an agreement with Sheelings, which would provide holding the suspension in abeyance for a period of 180 days. And if there is another failure to pass inspection, escalate the penalties. But if there are no, uh, but if there are no further problems within the 180 day period, then waive the suspension. Um, I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, didn't we already agree that that they would be that they would be in that the it was a one year. A, a look back period, or, or am I wrong yes. about that? No, so so that was changing that, it to six months. So that was on what was the date of that email? That was June, June the 20th. 20th. So that was an early idea. I think it kind of in consultation and back and forth with Megan when we discussed it. I think Megan said at, at, at the outset of this meeting, I think I began, it was a year. So I think there was a back and forth between Megan and I. And Megan felt maybe a year would be a better period. So that's a year was the original period. So anyway, that, that was just an idea. It, everything is subject to the board's approval. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't have the power to do anything. I'm just sort of giving Megan ideas in terms of a resolution. It's really up to the board <laughs> in your judgment. It's, it's not my judgment. Can we make a motion at this time? Um, well, or is that appropriate or no? Well, what, what we would do, I'd like to go around first and just check in with everybody to see if they have any other questions. And then if no one else does, then we would close this meeting and then move to the executive meeting and we would meet privately as a board to discuss further and make a decision. Okay. Okay. So why don't we, Jan, do you have anything you'd like to ask? Uh, no, it's just a comment. And here's where my concern is, because as with Dr. Hanna, I'm in the healthcare industry still. I was a surveyor and I am an RN. And just to lay it on the line, uh, as Tom did so eloquently, you have one, two, three, four conditionally satisfactories. And uh, the bottom line with this is that the facility never made any attempt to really do those corrections. And when the 17th came in, they proceeded to tell people not to come in so that in a way, in my eyes as a surveyor, I see that as impeding the inspection. So Janet, Janet, that's may, my may, may, sure. once, once I learned sure. Once I learned that I wasn't supposed to do that, Megan, uh, excuse me. Sean, Sean. Yeah. And it. All right. That's it. That's all I have to say. About Dr. Hannah, did you have anything else? I think Janet summed it up very eloquently, but a uh, comment to Mr. Blick. Foodborne illnesses are serious concerns for the public. Um, I think making a statement like that can be misleading and appear to be uneducated decision based upon science, facts, and medicine. Thank you. John, Ashi? No, I have else? nothing else to say. Thank you. Sure. How about Regina? I think Regina um, couldn't come on properly, so she, I think she signed off. Oh, okay. Michael Lewis? No further questions. Tom? I've said enough. What about Kathleen? No questions. What's that, Kathleen? No questions. Okay. 
Couldn't hear you. Tanisha? No further questions. I think I got everybody, right? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Sounds like okay. Like to All make right. motion to go into executive session. I'm going to ask Colleen first to uh, read the contents of the resolution into okay. the record. Okay. Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 7 at SEC, commonly known as the Sunshine Law, requires that the Board of Health meetings be open to the public except for this discussion of certain subjects. And whereas the Sunshine Law requires that a closed session be authorized by resolution. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Health of the Borough of Fanwood County of Union State of New Jersey, that the following portion of this meeting shall be closed to the public and the meeting shall be resumed at the end of the closed section, session. Be it further resolved that the subject to be discussed and the time of public release of the minutes of the closed session are indicated below. The subject matter is matters falling within the attorney client privilege. Time when the circumstances under which the subject matter can be disclosed upon authorization by the borough attorney as required by law. Thank you, Colleen. And then I'd like a motion from a member to move to the executive session. Second the motion. <clears throat> I Michael move. first it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, then we will move into executive session and we will wait until everyone has left and then we can start. Everyone else, one of our members would like, one of our members would like to make a motion. My name is Michael Lewis. Time. I would like to make a motion to reaffirm the suspension of the licenses of Sheelan's fish market uh, that were imposed in our meeting of June 1st uh, with a suspension to occur on July 5th and 6th, reaffirming uh, the cumulative nature of suspensions should further conditional satisfactories recur and with a continuation of the provision that an additional certified food handler uh, be certified for Sheelan's fish market within a 60 day period as originally specified. take need, a vote we need a second on that Martha. second okay roll call. okay this is a roll call to affirm um, mike lewis's motion regina brown john Hanna. here this is to accept the motion aye uh tom kranz yes margaret lewis yes Michael Lewis? Yes. Jan Siegel? Yes. Kathleen Thomas? Yes. John Achi? Yes. Tanisha McGriff? Yes. Okay, the motion carried, Margaret. Okay. If I, if I right, may so just if, if I may just place on the record that this is board action taken against Sheelan's fishery. In accordance with the June 27th uh, letter noticing this uh, this hearing, there is no mention whatsoever of board action with regards to Sheelan's fishery. Um, so I'm placing that objection on the record. The fish, the fishery and the fish market, are they separate entities? These are absolutely separate entities. This is Oh. There's a notice concerning Sheelan's Crossing, which is a different entity than the fish market. They're, they're two separate licenses, right, Megan? They are, correct. No, but he said fishery versus fish market. I think Michael was asking if those are two different things. I think he's talking about the same place, Sheelan's Fish Market. I, I, I may have misspoken, yes. The, the point yeah, being... So, yeah, we, we understand the two are different. We get that. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes. So now we're moving into the hearing for Sheelan's Crossing. Can, can I, before we do that, can I just make a, a, a point of, of reconsideration at, at the very least, not acquiescing to um, the board's action, but to the extent that the board is gonna uphold a uh, suspension for two days, um, that we request that they be done on days that are not highly active days, perhaps July 3rd or 4th? July 5th and 6th. We said July 5th and 6th specifically for that reason. Because you want it to be on more active days? Are you telling me that July 5th and 6th are more active than the 3rd and the 4th and tomorrow? Yeah, because it's it, based on what I understand, it's a pretty slow couple of days during the July 4th holiday. Right. And July 4th, the restaurant's closed anyway, right? I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I Personally, I think our decision stands. The, the decision stands. Um, I have I, I have a comment uh, on what our attorney, not not Mr. Ugal, but Mr. Bick, uh, said. The public notice reads: At the time of this notice, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss and vote on matters related to health code violations at 383 South Avenue and 200 South Avenue. Formal action will be taken. Is that not sufficient? No, I'm talking about the June, June 27th letter to Mr. Pascal and Mr. Flannery. Specifically references only Sheelan's Crossing. The public notice may be adequate, but the notice to my client about the subject matter of this hearing respectfully is inadequate. I, I don't see that letter, I'm sorry. So, I guess uh, noted for the record, I guess. Okay. All right, we'll move on to the hearing for Shealing's Crossing. And this is based off the three um, conditionally satisfactory findings. And why don't we start with um, Christy? Can you sh uh, review the findings that you had on the inspections, please? Um, sure, no problem. So on June 23rd, I conducted a reinspection at Sheelan's Crossing, and the following violations um, were observed. There were numerous foodborne illness risk factors observed, um, which indicated a lack of managerial control. I did not observe any food um, hand washing. So I asked the one food worker if he could ask one of the employees to please wash their hands. And um, he asked the one gentleman in the back to wash their hands. And um, he, one, washed his hands in the three compartment sink. And then a follow to dry his hands on the common towel that was being stored in his waistband. I also observed the um, one worker was breading raw chicken cutlets with a glove that was cut in the palm area. And he, while breading the chicken, continued to prepare ready to eat fried chicken cutlets and back and forth with handling the handle of the fryer basket with um, the intent of cross-contamination. The three compartment sink was tested and the sanitizer concentration was um, not detectable. There was also um, food particles and debris in the sanitizer concentration which is the last step in the wear washing and should be clean to indicate that the utensils and the equipment is correctly sanitized. There was several cooked chicken cutlets in one of the Bain Marie refrigeration units that were at a temperature of 48 to 50 degrees. And this was indicating that it was not 
properly held under refrigeration temperatures. There was also um, multiple food handlers that were observed to change their gloves without a hand washing. Um, all of those violations that I just stated were critical violations. Um, some were repeated. There was also um, their cooling methods. I asked the one food handler the critical cooling temperatures and he did not know them. Um, there was uh, a container floating in the salsa that didn't have a handle. Um, the piercing blade to the can opener that pierces the cans to open was visibly soiled. And the oil container in the back had um, the lid open and there was actually birds on top of it, but also the container had a heavy um, grease buildup and the cement around it was very soiled. Um, I did go over these violations with Sean um, and because there was a significant amount of critical violations observed, um, the third repeat conditionally satisfactory was issued. Anybody have any questions for Christy? I, I, I do on these photos that we receive. I don't know what they are. Besides looking nasty, but um. <laughs> Uh, sure, I, I have no problem explaining them. Um, so I know on the one photo, you can actually see the can opener. Um, you can observe the blade being visibly soiled, but also the rubber container um, handle, I mean, being visibly soiled. And that's important because that's actively going in anything that's opening um, that the can, the blade touches. Um, the other photo, the one is the grease drum in the back and with the bird on top. Um, I did include a photo of one of the chest freezers. You can see that it's pretty heavily duct taped. Um, Elaine, do you I, think they should share the screen? I'm sorry, Christy. To, sure. to, would that be helpful to the board maybe? Or if it's a bit of we, we've yeah. not, I've not been provided with any of these photos, so that would certainly be helpful to me. Okay. Is that okay, Russ, if I share my screen and... Yeah, abs absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Hold on one second. Um, yeah, I, I found them here. Yeah, there may be members of the public, you know. Oh. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? It's blank. It's just blank right now. Oh, mine is blank. Okay. Yeah, it's blank, Kristen. Hold on a second. Okay, hold on, let me try again. Okay. Can you see now? Still no. blank. Megan, you might have to select the photo individually as opposed to sharing the full screen, just share the document. Okay, so like share it to the chat? No, so like if you have the picture open on your computer, uh -huh. what you do is when you go to share screen, there's an option to share just a specific thing that's open as opposed to your full computer screen. So okay. see if you see it in Oh, I see, list. I see, got it. Yeah. How about that? Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Okay. So Christy, do you want to explain what this is? Sure, no problem. So in this photo, you're you're seeing the three compartments saying the very left compartment is the sanitizer, which I alluded in the report that it has to be um, 
clear and clean of any food particles. And you can clearly see that it's um, the water is murky and there's also food particles floating in it. So that's the last step in the wash, rinse and sanitize for any of the utensils and the equipment. And if that's dirty, then it's not effectively cleaning that utensil or dish um, that's going through it. So that's why that's important. You're talking about the, the sink that was closest to us, right? The one that was right in the foreground there? Um, not it was the sink the, with the blue water. Uh, the opposite one. The blue um, water was detergent. It should have been the, the other one, the left. The left one would be the one that's closest to us. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was the, I think it was, it was the left one, the one that was closest to us. Yeah. Okay, that was my question. Thank yeah. you. Uh, this photo is the grease oil drum outside. And then if you can see on the top right, there are birds on it. But on the front um, part of the oil drum, you can see it's very soiled with grease, debris. Um, and then also on the cement, it's heavily soiled with grease, oil, food particles, which can you know create a environment for rodent harborage, um, insects, rats, rats. That's correct. Um, in this picture, you can see that the chest freezer, the duct tape is on the handle, which why this is important is because it's not an easily cleanable surface anymore. Um, so that's an issue. I'm sorry, I have a question. Why was there sure. duct tape on top of the I was just going to ask the same thing. <laughs> what is that? What was the purpose of the duct tape? Was it to keep something together? I. I assume so, yes. Um, this photo is the grease trap that was in the basement. Um, to my, what I was looking at was the lug nut on top looks as if there was um, some type of grease buildup on top, but then also on the floor, um, it was looking visibly soiled as well. Christy, on your visits, were you dealing with Mr. Pascal or were you dealing with one of his food handlers or were you dealing with somebody who was a food handler but not certified? Sure. Um, so on this particular visit, Sean was there. Um, he was um, spoken to regarding the violations, but I mainly had the um, inspection as far as asking any type of um, food handler questions, processes, anything like that. I spoke with the gentleman in the back named Gio. And to mm -hmm. my knowledge, he did not have any food handler training. Okay. This photo here um, is the can opener. So you can see where the blade is on the top left is visibly soiled, but also um, the rubber holster where the um, can opener goes back in is visibly soiled. So that's a direct food contact surface that's actually going into anything that's cutting. So that's an issue. This photo is the cooked chicken breast. Um, so you can see the thermometer is reading 48 degrees. Anything that's going to be cold held needs to be 41 degrees or below. Um, the top of the chicken was 48 degrees. The lower the chicken was, was um, 43, 44 degrees. But the issue with this is that 
the cooked chicken breasts were stacked so high above the inserted in the Bain Marine that it was never going to be able to hold that cold holding temperature. I think those are the only pictures um, that I have. Yep. Thank you. Welcome. Is Mr. Flannery certified as a food handler? Yes, he is. He is, okay. My concern, so, my, my main concern right. with this report, I'm sorry. My main concern with this report is I see there's a number of repeat uh, infractions. Uh, Am I correct that that's more serious than? That is correct. On the checklist, um, if you look, anything that indicates an R is a repeated violation. Hmm. What's the date of this report that you're uh, reviewing? The June date 20. is June 23rd, 2022. I don't know that we have that. In fact, I'm looking at uh, May 19th and April 13th. I don't, I don't think we have that. Actually, I do have, I have June, June 23rd, 22. I have it. Um, it was in the packet that I picked up. It's page, uh, page 33, 34, 536, all the way to, um, all the way to 43. Again, I, I, the, I appreciate the reference, but I don't have a copy of it, so it doesn't help me. Um, Mr. F uh, Mr. Flannery. Yes. Do you have a copy of that? I'm looking right now, but I do not recall seeing it. What I did do with Christine, uh, I was sitting out front while she was in the back with the, uh, the cooks. Uh, she was kind enough to come sit with me when we were complete, when she completed the inspection. And I took detailed notes uh, with her on June 23rd. I then distributed those notes to each one of the cooks and managers throughout the entire company. Um, but I do not, I, I'm looking right now. I have uh, an email from Christine on 620 and then this Friday. This Friday was the 24th. All right, look, to, to the extent that the board is considering a, a report that we don't have in our possession, I would ask that any action be stayed pending receipt of the report. Yeah. Christy, can you check to see if that report was sent out? Yes, I believe it was emailed um, on Monday. Let me um, double check my emails right now though. Sure. Okay, so on the 24th, the tw th there was a first email that said you sent the original one. Then the next email you sent out, Christine, was speaking again about Shillings Fish Market. Um, let me go to the next one. Good afternoon. Yeah, and then I got an email from you, Christine, just about the notification, which the title of the notification was Shillings Crossing. And so I didn't know we were going to be talking about Shillings Fish Market tonight at all. Um, but just, um, and I, should I speak now, Sean, and just let them know what we've done um, since the uh, inspections? If the board will hear you, I have no objection. Is that okay, guys? Sure. Yes. Okay, so 
of, 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 uh, of class has been booked for July 25th in both Spanish and English and a mandatory meeting uh, for serve safe to be taken by all cooks, uh, front of the house and managers. Uh, it's not only booked, it's, it's signed and paid for. Uh, all of the cooling, uh, I sent a list of all the procedures. Uh, one book has been provided to the cooks. Uh, I have already ordered from Mr. B printing that all of the statutes and, and regulations and requires from washing hands to cooling everything, it's on a one pager in color, is gonna be laminated and, and put in each one of the kitchens. Um, we prepared and I paid probably between both restaurants about, I wanna say $1,700 in overtime. Uh, each location was cleaned, updated, uh, speaking to the guys in some cases is very, very challenging, but, you know, I had Dennis there full time because Frank's been away. I'm, I'm sure you guys know for two weeks, so he'll be back Saturday. Um, so I had to have Dennis come in, the manager from Plainfield, pull him away from there. And then I had to pay people to cover all his shifts. So we spent two and a half full days just in the kitchen uh, at crossing. And we spent three days at the kitchen prepping for inspections uh, at the fish market. Um, so that's, that's where we're at as of today. Okay. Margaret, do you want to open it up for comments from the board members? If anyone has any questions individually? Yeah, I was just going to say that actually, <laughs> does anybody have any questions? For uh, Sean, Mr. Flannery, excuse me, directly. And, and you know, I did not, um, I, I sat out in the bar the entire time Christine was doing the uh, inspection at Crossing as well. Just, I want everybody to know that. Christine, I don't have the report in front of me. What were the repeat violations for? Christy, I have them here if you want me to um, read them. Sure. All right, so this is from the um, one that was done on the 23rd, Whoever. correct? Yep. On the 23rd, it was a food contact surfaces properly cleaned and sanitized repeat violation um, from the last time. Uh, premises maintained free of litter, unnecessary articles, cleaning and maintenance equipment properly stored, garbage and refuse properly maintained, a repeat violation. Um, lots of new violations this time. The inspection before then on May 19th is littered with repeat violations. Uh, on that um, inspection, uh, hand washing facilities uh, in a uh, hand improper um, improper uh, staged hand wash facilities without a uh, soap and acceptable hand uh, drying method. Um, the, the, this, the shellfish tags are not being kept properly. That uh, is a repeat violation. Again, food contact surfaces properly cleaned and sanitized, repeat violation. Um, okay, I get it. Okay. I just wanted to know what the nature of the repeats were. I, I, you don't have to go through all of them. Okay. I, I okay. appreciate it. I'm good, thank you. Yeah. So we're still talking definite food safety things. You know, I don't personally, I don't get why, you know, the bird sitting on top of the oil dispenser out in the backyard is an imminent threat to people. I, I do get that it's a rat, a possible rat thing, but things that I care about are hand washing, cross contamination, and the temperature of the food. And it sounds like those three are all present. And the common towel issue again. Towels were fixed. I mean, what, what, I don't know who was just speaking. There were repeat violations that once I got involved uh, and we spent the two and a half days in the overtime for everybody, which were eliminated. So the towels and, and I'll probably want to ask which ones were all fixed in the, in the inspection from the 23rd, we'll know what they were. Christine, um, we also discussed 
uh, what type of eggs we had to use, um, and uh, and how to stack uh, foods in the proper order. Just for the record, that is true. Uh, is it Miss Is it Miss Kalman? That is correct, sir. Uh, were, were you able to uh, find uh, the transmission email concerning that report we're looking at now? Yeah, um, I can send another copy as well. You were right. I mistakenly sent the fish company uh, report, and then I sent this one. Uh, I could send it out right now again. But Sean, no. you and I, Sean, um, you and I never got it. Just so you know. Let me send that right now. Uh, do you have my email address? Um, no. What is a good email address, sir? Uh, it's S as in Sam, B as in boy, L I C K at blicklaw.com. That's B L I C K law.com. I have a question. This is Tanisha. So Mr. Sean, the owner of the of Sheelands, he hasn't received a report, but he did take detailed notes. So based on his notes, he's already started to make some corrective action. Is that correct? Well, no, that not just, not just some, ma'am, all. Um, and, and what's really going to be effective is when the uh, serve safe trainer comes in and speaks Spanish directly to the guys. It's gonna, it's gonna help. Good. What trainer is that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Sean. Serve safe trainer. Oh, gotcha. And that's gonna be on the 25th of July. You said? Yes, ma'am. Yep, that was the earliest I can get a Spanish speaking person here. Okay, so I, I just want to make sure I, I completely understand. So despite not having the report, based on your notes that you took that day, you were able to make all of the corrections. Well, not all of them, but most of them. Uh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so, I, 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 didn't, I, I, I understand. I understand where you're going with that. You're arguing that there's no prejudice, and I can appreciate that. But again, I just need to make sure that we've got everything that the board is relying on in making any decisions. Uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a due process requirement and that due process is to make sure that we have everything that the board has so that we can appropriately defend. I, I agree, well, I understand. So I'm just trying to understand how are all of these corrections made and you don't have the actual report. Understood. Only because I sat with uh, Christine at the bar and took detailed notes. And I, you know, I, I'm, I'd like to read it to you. It take 10 seconds. This uh, June 23rd, Department of Health comments from today's inspections. This went out to all the cooks at all three locations. A conditional satisfactory was provided. A new inspection is to take place in 30 days. We may or may not have another hearing. Key items from the public inspector was public safety, uh, con uh, concerns about cooling and cross contamination. Items listed are not in any priority but we have to uh, address them all. All cooks will take a surf safe class as well as the front of house managers and it'll be mandatory within the next 30 days. So I didn't have the confirmed date at that time when I wrote this. Items called out, touch chicken tenders, basket while preparing and prepping boneless wings, endless washed hands in the wrong sink and the sa sanitizer sink. Prep sink didn't have enough bleach. Can opener was not cleaned after I repeatedly begged all of you to be sure everything was perfectly cleaned and ready to be uh, inspected. I bought degreaser and we clean walls and doors and must be a constant maintenance. New cleaning schedule will be uh, uh, administered and upheld daily. All thermostats are to be left in the refrigerator. We spent all this money on thermostats. Uh, the freezer uh, with the, the with the juices of tortuco, make sure it's clean. And that's the one of which you were asking about the uh, the tape. Eggs must be pasteurized or in liquid form for Caesar salad and tiramisu. Uh, prep food, uh, make sure it, it's in the proper area in which there'll be no cross contamination. I asked specifically to Christine, what do I have to do with the ice scooper? Uh, and she said, I can stick it in the ice as long as the handle's up. 
or I can put it in a clean area. I even made a suggestion that we change the current knife holder uh, to a magnet strip. She thought it was a great idea. Um, then she explained to me, which I got to tell you, I was not aware of what order to stack the food in. Um, she spoke to me about the outside grease container. Uh, Russ probably knows there's an investigation going on. There are uh, companies stealing uh, the grease. Uh, there's a container that's not even ours. Um, and uh, so I've been making sure the guys have been closing the top of the container. Uh, there was another thing too, you had the uh, cook was, was prep cooking for the day and he had the, the uh, heavy cream out and it was, it was sitting to be utilized to cook into the, you know, the cooktop uh, near the uh, stove. So the cream was at a higher degree than she wanted. So we threw it out. Uh, I put a, I said, we were going to put a defined plan for cooling all soups, chicken, etc. cetera. Um, and make sure you're utilizing your gloves and you're watching, uh, washing your hands as Aiden's glove was ripped and he didn't change it. A new inspection for probably is gonna happen in the must 30 days and we must have a written plan, including our safe, safe class booked and done to date. That went out to everybody, the 23rd. Do we see a copy of that? Can we see that? Yeah, so my lawyer has a copy of that. He has a copy of all of the one pagers that are going to be laminated posted on the wall. He has a copy of the letter from today saying that we were discussing Sheelan's Crossing where we had no idea we were going to talk about Sheelan's Fish. Um, what else did you have? We don't have a copy of today's uh, list of complaints. Uh, so we need that as well. Um, okay. and, and I would like to see that letter that yeah. you uh, that you sent to your employees. Sure, I have no problem. Does anybody else have any other questions for Sean? July 25th takes you past the 30 day mandatory inspection, but it appears that you're making an effort towards rectifying what, was, what were identified as being problems. Um, would the, would the board consider uh, an inspection prior to July 31st to allow them, the food handling aspect of it to take place uh, on a random inspection basis to give them the additional time they would need to fully train their staff? So you're, you're you're referencing after July after they take after the class. July twenty fifth, but sometime before the thirty first. I would go for that. I would say yes. Um, and again, with the poll. proviso that there is another conditional satisfactory that at that point there would be a two day suspension of license cumulative. Megan, is that that's an option we can do, right? Yeah, I mean, the board can do um, anything they want. Um, I do have to say I'm very pleased uh, that Mr. Flannery has come today um, with a, 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 a real concrete um, action plan. Uh, that's um, that's really, really good to hear. You know, the, the department's goal um, is, is to make sure that the product is safe for the public. So it seems like the framework is being set up for that. Um, you know the the one thing that I I would um I would encourage uh, Mr. Flannery to really focus on is reinforcing how important proper hand washing is uh, for the staff because um, throughout the two establishments it seems to be that the improper hand washing is a recurrent theme so I think everything you've listed uh, is 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 really appropriate and great for me to hear. Um, but if you could also just really, really strongly reiterate to the staff that they need to hand wash appropriately um, and uh, frequently, uh, that 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 will get you to where you need to be. Uh, I sent that letter to Russ. Russ, uh, do, do you want me to send you the printouts that M Mr. B's uh, laminating as well? You, you can you can email it to me. My email address is rugel at fanwoodnj.org, R-H-U-E-G-E-L 
at famwoodnj.org. That's my family, uh, Famwood email address. Just send it there. That's fine. All right, good. We could, cir we could circulate it. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh... Questions for Sean? We Please, guys, ask me anything, because um, I, I personally um, feel there's, there's, there's just a bit of confusion um, between the two restaurants um, and, and what was older uh, issues compared to what is now. Uh, and obviously, um, uh, all the actions that I knew you wanted me to take, I, I've, I've implemented. And, and we worked feverishly and as hard as we could to get ready for these for these. Uh, and I spent a lot of money that we don't have at all um, uh, to get prepared. So we really tried hard. I agree with Mike Lewis's proposal. How's everybody else? Okay, feeling? what the proposal is is that there will be an inspection after the 25th, but before the 30th. 31st. Before the 31st. Before the 31st of July, there will be another inspection. Okay. That's at random, unannounced. At random, right. At random. Good. Uh, with a, the conditional satisfactory, with another conditional satisfactory resulting in a two day suspension, that would be cumulative in the event that it should recur. <coughs> and I'd like to make that so motion. We have a second. I second. But before we do roll call, may I just make a suggestion? Um, typically, when we make these motions, sure. we say um, any rating that is less than satisfactory. Um, while I don't anticipate this to be the case, there is always the um, possibility that that any restaurant might be also rated unsatisfactory. So just as a catch all, I would recommend that the board consider if they want to move forward with the motion, they just change the wording to any rating less than satisfactory. I would like to make that amendment to a less than satisfactory. Okay, good. I'll second it. Can we take a vote? Yes. Sure. Can you this is for the motion over? that Mike Lewis just made, and this is relative to Fanwood Crossing. Uh, Regina Brown. John Hanna. Three. Tom Kranz. Yes. Margaret Lewis. Yes. Mike Lewis. Yes. Dan Siegel. Yes. Kathleen Thomas. Kathleen? Yes. You there? I'm yes. here. John Archie? Yes. Tanisha McGriff? Yes. Okay, the motion does carry, Margaret. Okay. Um, thanks to the I'm board. Very happy to hear. What that? Okay. I said th thank you to the board for, for that action. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Mm -hmm. Megan, yes, we'll thank you for be put into writing by either you or Russell so that um, Sean and his attorney are very clear. Yes. Yes. Okay. Russ, um, all of the critical items that Megan was speaking about are on the sheets I just sent you, plus the letter to your email. Okay. Okay, it sounds like we have a plan in place and Again, we're very happy that you have uh, made some changes and are it's a good thing. Does anybody have anything else? When you get the copy of the of his letter, uh, could I get could I see it? Could you send that out to us? The copy of Sean's letter to his employees. I think it's going to Russ. Yeah, I don't see it yet in my email. Uh, mm -hmm. so hopefully it didn't bounce back when he sent it. I'll tell you exactly which email it went to. Yeah, let me check. R John. 
R H U E G E L at Fanwood. Uh, let me open that part up. Uh, Fanwood.org. Not the NJ. <laughs> yeah, NJ after Fanwood. Yeah, so it's my first initial, Google at fanwoodnj.org. Yeah, I have and, two emails for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's an, yeah, I use my, uh, for my law practice, it's MSN. It's my first name, last name at msn.com. But yeah. All right, they're both sent again. Okay. All right, and then I'll, I'll circulate tomorrow. I'll send it. And I'm assuming Christine sent um, both Sean and I the latest report. I have the re I have the report. Um, I just need the original transmittal. I think I emailed Christina about that. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure you have it. Yep. All right. Okay, received. So we're good. All right, thanks, I'll, I'll, I'll circulate tomorrow. Thank you. Make sure, please send both because everything that Megan is asking me for is on those colored uh, sheets that are being laminated. Okay, well, I'll just, you sent some attachment there. I'll, I'll, I'll forward it. Whatever you sent me, I'll forward yeah, it. Yeah, there's two emails. One's the letter and one's all the, 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 how you cool the food, how you wash your hands, how you uh, wear gloves. I mean, it's all there. I mean, okay. it, it, pictures speak a thousand words, especially if you don't speak the language. Yeah, understood. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank okay. you. Next, we'll, we'll open the meeting. Thank you. The meeting to the public. Do we have anybody else here? I don't think so, right? No. Okay. I do see someone want... that's not a yeah. board member, but I don't know. Ed Windsor. Ted Windsor is a rescue squad member. I guess he's uh, looking in while he's on duty. I'm just guessing. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. All right. I just want to thank everybody. I know this is a very long meeting. We've had a lot of meetings lately. I appreciate everybody's input and commitment. And thank you. We're still having uh, next week's meeting as scheduled, right? Uh, August 4th is our next meeting Tom, oh, August 4th. Next okay meeting. right 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 yeah, okay we have a month yeah yeah next actually, month actually just to ca cancel the counts the council agenda meeting so mm -hmm. it, the next right. council meeting will be the regular meeting right that's correct the uh council agenda meeting for the fifth has been canceled okay so then I we need a motion to adjourn I'd like to make a motion to adjourn a second second a second Hey, thank you, everybody, and I'll Bye see guys. everybody thank on you. the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, all.